Hi, my name is Kagan. Uh, I'm a docent here at the Chumash Indian Museum. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our small exhibit today. Our tamal here is a replica. Uh, it's much smaller than uh, tamals that were used traditionally. Uh, this one is about half the size uh, of a, a real tamal, and real tamals would be able to carry up to 10 people uh, and up to 500 pounds of fish. Tamals were used uh, for fishing expeditions in between mainland California and the Channel Islands for the most part. Uh, tamals are also used uh, in trading missions for the Chumash. They would take items from home, usually stone and shell beads, and take those up and down the coast uh, as far north as San Luis Obispo and as far south as Malibu Beach uh, and everywhere in between. Tamals are constructed from redwood, uh, which in Southern California we actually don't have uh, growing natively. So uh, redwood was acquired usually after large storms would blow redwoods out of the forest up north, uh, and then the ocean currents would carry those south to places like Carpinteria, Santa Barbara, uh, and as far as Malibu Beach, where uh, Chumash tribesmen uh, would gather the wood and uh, begin construction of the tamals. Uh, large redwood tree trunks were split using uh, stone and bone tools like these. Uh, so these are some simple uh, wedge implements that were used to split the wood. Uh, and those were driven usually uh, just with a handheld hammer stone like this one. These planks were then drilled out using long sticks with stone points on the edge and all hand powered, right? After they are drilled, uh, cordage made from yucca fiber string uh, is used to actually sew the planks together uh, in a pretty ingenious way, similar to the way that my fingers are bound here. All right? Uh, and then to waterproof the boats, uh, two ingredients are used. One is tar from local beaches that just washes up and the other is pine sap uh, from the trees themselves. So if you melt these two things together on a large stone bowl, you get a brand new substance that Chumash called yacht, uh, which acts as a waterproof glue, uh, keeping the water out of your vessel. The last step uh, in tamal construction is of course decoration. Uh, traditionally, abalone shells are used uh, to decorate the boats. Uh, and are sometimes filled with uh, special herbs and medicines uh, as basically good luck charms for the sea voyage. Uh, each tamal is also uh, outfitted with its own insignia, its own symbol in the front and back of the boat, uh, indicating who had built the vessel. Uh, and most of these vessels were created by what we call the Atmalik, or the Brotherhood of the Tamal, uh, which was likened to a builder's guild for the Chumash tribe. This guild would keep all of these methods that we just talked about uh, a closely kept secret uh, until about the early 1900s. Uh, a man named Fernando Librado, uh, Kitsepawe was his tribal name, uh, revealed the information to uh, archeologists and anthropologists uh, as they were traveling up and down the coast, kind of gathering information uh, from the last survivors of the mission system. Tamals are still a very important part of Chumash culture today. Uh, modern Chumash people do still uh, construct and paddle these tamals. And if you'd like to see that, uh, we do have links on our website. Uh, so you can go ahead and check there for the latest videos of modern Chumash paddlers.